السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ یا ربی لک الحمد کما یمبا وی لی جلا علی وجہ کا و عظیم سلطانک الحمد للہ اللہ ربنا لک الحمد بما خلقتنا و رزقتنا و حدیتنا و فرشت عنا اللہ لک الحمد بل ایمان و لک الحمد بل اسلام و لک الحمد بل قرآن اما بعد فاؤز بلّہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش وحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدۃ ملسانی یقہ قولی ربی ضدنا علم اللہ فقنا فدین اللہ انا نسال علم نافیم و عمل متقبل و رزقن طیبا اللہ ثبت نا عند الموتی بلا الہ الا اللہ اللہ صلی اللہ محمد والا علی محمد الحمد للہ بائی دا عزن آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی بائی اسپیشل فدل وی آر گوئنگ ٹو فنش سورت ناس الحمد للہ سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ وی ور آن آور لاسٹ آیا اینڈ بیفور وی گو دیئر سو لیٹ سی بٹ ڈڈ وی لرن سو فار سو آؤز بلّہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل یو سے دس از کمینڈ ٹو پروفیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم ایٹ دا ٹائم آف ہز ریولیشن بٹ ناؤ وین آئی ایم ریڈنگ اور یو آر ریڈنگ دس از آر ڈائریکٹ کمینڈ آف اللہ سبحان تعالیٰ ٹو اس سبحان اللہ رائٹ سو دس از دا میریکل آف قرآن دیٹ قرآن از الائیو ایز وی آر اسپیکنگ اباؤٹ اٹ رائٹ ناؤ سو قل آؤز بی رب ناز آؤز آئی سیک ریفیوج آئی سیک پروٹیکشن سو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ از لٹرلی میکنگ اے سی دیٹ آئی نیڈ پروٹیکشن او اللہ آئی نیڈ یور پروٹیکشن بی رب ناز ہو آئی نیڈ پروٹیکشن آف دا ون ہو از رب آف مین کائنڈ ہی از مائی پرووائڈر ہی از دا ریئل اتھارٹی he is my caretaker he is my nurturer right he is munim he is sayyid he is mudabbir so when he has uh, like uh, control over everything and anything then i need to submit to this rab right then we have malikin nas malikin nas the real authority the king of the mankind so he is the real authority no one should think that they have any uh, authority o- over someone or we should know that anyone is uh, powerful and they can help uh, me out no one but malikin nas no one but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ilahin nas and he is the real ilah he is the only worthy of worship not only worthy of worship he is the only one that uh, is deserving to uh, to be loved ila has the meaning of uh, entity that is uh, uh, being loved at the level of madness right and uh, uh, then he is the authority unquestionable no one can ask him any question no one can uh, uh, dare or uh, have any authority to ask any question what he did he did right so he is unquestionable and then this is uh, in our fitra that uh, in desperation we turn towards uh, someone and this someone is no one else but ilahin nas the ila of mankind the ila of me the ila of everyone so he is the uh, only entity that should be worshipped that should be loved that should be uh, seen uh, or uh, turned to in the time of uh, any desperation and this is literally in our fitra no one is going to tell us whenever we are desperate 
we uh, according to our fitra we turn towards allah subhanahu wa taala and then he is unquestionable then uh, so these all three ayat are uh, al mustaaza be he so the one that we are seeking protection of right so we are seeking protection of allah subhanahu wa taala because he is rabbi nas malikin nas and ilahi nas then moving uh, next three ayat we are going to find that they are uh, al mustaaza minhu the protection we are seeking from why do we need this protection why we need to turn to rabbi nas malikin nas ilahi nas why allah subhanahu wa taala is making sure that uh, like uh, he is the only authority who can save us from any um, danger which is uh, mentioned in the next ayat and this is uh, uh, al waswas right the uh, whispering of shaitan and basically this is the main 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 um, evil danger we can see uh, on it, on this earth even though not every waswasa we are uh, going to think that okay uh, this is shaitan right sometimes people are telling us uh, some uh, evil thought putting in our uh, uh, in our head right or saying us or pressurizing us to do something but actually this waswasa uh, like the shaitan the iblis uh, kind of inspired that person or took help of this person that this person is coming to me and telling me to uh, to do what to do so actually the actual source of any evil happening in this world is basically the waswasa of shaitan we don't see that uh, directly but it is wa min sharril waswas al khanas so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that there is real danger and what, where is this danger coming from from the uh, iblis and uh, this iblis we can see this was was uh, we uh, like uh, spend a lot of time on this word uh, we see that uh, this scene is basically is uh, repeating right and this is the basically this whispering is not going to stop it will keep happening and happening and happening and then khannas and alwaswas when uh, uh, shaitan or iblis put uh, waswasa in our uh, heart or in our uh, chest what he is trying to do this is basically his uh, offense and as soon as we remember that that could be the uh, waswasa of shaitan and i'm going to seek protection of allah subhanahu wa taala then he take defense he go in a defense mode he just flee he ran away but he is not he is not running away forever but he is going to ambush ambush mean if we see that uh, when uh, animals are preying they are very focused when to attack on their prey so this is how shaitan is uh, in the in the you know, like waiting for us so uh, when he he is looking for a moment that we are uh, um like uh, uh, being un, uh, like we are um, uh, not thinking about allah subhanahu wa taala or we are not doing the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala or we are in the disobediency of allah subhanahu wa taala then this is the time he can attack very easily because uh, he find us weak over there so al waswas is his uh, offense and al khannas is his uh, defense allazi yuwaswisu fi suduri nas and then further allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing alwaswas this alwaswas this iblis put waswasa where in suduri nas not in qulub nas so that is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he did not give uh, iblis the access to our hearts rather to our chest only and this is uh, completely on us that uh, we can entertain this uh, waswasa or we can just say auz billahi min ash shaitanir rajim and make him failure right so uh, may allah make us among those who always remember allah subhanahu wa taala at the time of uh, whispering 
And now uh, the last area we are going to talk about is uh, that, uh, um, yes, the real, um, the source, the real source of uh, whispering is who? Iblis. But Iblis, since he is unseen, right? So he is uh, going to take help from other. And who is this other? These others, the helpers of uh, Al uh, Vaswas, the uh, helpers of Iblis are Minal Jinnati. They could be from Jinn, and which we know that Kareen can be one of them. And maybe there are many other ev evil Jinn, right? They, can, they would be helper. And even the Zurriyat of uh, uh, Iblis himself, right? So he has many um, generations with him, right? So these are, uh, they can be a source of uh, whispering. And then not even, that is not uh, enough. Even one Nas, the people, when we uh, last uh, class, we were talking about that uh, when Shaitan overtake a person, then what happened? He is completely gonna follow Shaitan's uh, whispering, right? And now this human being is basically the helper of uh, uh, Iblis. And this person can somehow influence me as a community, and if this person is my friend, so obviously he can uh, influence me, right? So these people, any person who is coming to me and uh, giving me some uh, evil thought, putting evil thought in my head, then this person is uh, literally the helper of uh, uh, al Vaswas at that time. So this uh, Vaswasa can come, basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, <coughs> That, that can uh, can come from jinn and from mankind. Min, we know that min is her pujar over here, right? Al jinnati is isa majroor. Then wow came, wow is ataf, and an nasi again motufun uh, to jinn. So this is the irab of this ayah. And uh, one more thing is that uh, if we see this uh, uh, whole surah as a complete. We see that uh, the whole surah, how many ayat we have? Six. But all these six ayat are making just one sentence. They are making just one sentence. So that happened in Quran -e Park. That sometimes you, you will see that uh, in this case, we are uh, having six ayat, but this is uh, count as one complete sentence. And sometimes you will have uh, one ayah, like Aytal Kursi, or we have uh, in Surat Bakra the longest ayah, uh, Surat, uh, sorry, Ayatul Deen, Deen, it is said. Um, it is almost at the end of uh, third, uh, at the end of Surat Bakra, right? So, uh, that is the uh, ayat of Dain, and uh, it's uh, the whole one page ayah. So this is one ayah, but in this one ayah, there are many sentences in it. Okay, so we need to be aware of this concept in quran -e Paak. So in uh, one ayah is not a complete thought, right? So one ayah could be many sentences or one ayah could be incomplete and uh, uh, like uh, it is connected to other ayah to make uh, a complete sentence. So all these six ayat are making just one sentence. And we know that uh, uh, this uh, like Surat Fatiha is divided into two halves. Same is uh, uh, this surah. Uh, the first three are the, uh, the first part and the last three are the second part. So two half, uh, we can divide uh, this uh, surah into. Okay, now moving on. Uh, the ayah minal jinnati vannas. So the interesting word, and I know that everyone would be interested in jinn, right? So minal jinnati vannas. So basically uh, the verb is janna with the shadda over here. Janna ya junu. So this is Babna Sara. 
Janna ya Junnu and Junoon. We know that word, right? So Junoon is the master of it. And that means to cover, to hide, conceal. All these meanings are in the word Janna. And uh, then we can have different form of it. And uh, in quran e Park, we see uh, uh, Hazrat Ibrahim Islam, when he was uh, finding for the truth, finding uh, um, uh, the haq, what he was doing, maybe showing the lesson to his uh, people that uh, they are what, whatever they are worshiping is not the right thing. So he said that falamma when janna, janna mean go, uh, got hidden or disappear. When it disappear, what disappear? It's referring to sun. So he was making a point to his uh, people that uh, uh, what they are this, uh, what they are uh, worshiping all these uh, uh, sun and uh, um, like uh, stars and what not, right? So he was making a point that they cannot be the gods. So he said, Falamma, when Janna, uh, it uh, disappear, alayhi from him, but disappear, the sun disappear from him, alaylu at night. So at night, what happened? The sun disappear, ra'a, and he saw what? Kaukaban. Kaukaban means a uh, star. And then he said, Kala haza rabbi, this is my rabbi. So first uh, he, uh, he said that uh, he looked at the sun and he said, this is my rub because this is huge, right? But at time, at night time, it disappeared, right? So he said, no, then uh, like, doesn't make sense. Something should not disappear if I'm taking it as a God, right? So then he said that, okay, maybe this coke up could be my rub. And uh, all he was making a point to the people, to his nation, right? So basically the point I'm trying to make over here is Jannah. We can see the meaning of disappearing or hidden or concealing, right? So this is the word over here. And then we have uh, from Jannah, we have the word Jinn, right? Jinn is that uh, something which is invisible. And Jinni is uh, again, and uh, Jinniya. So this is the feminine version of Jinn. Subhanallah. And then we say the word Jannah. Now you should be thinking that what's the relation between Jannah or Jinn or Jannah? So there is literally a relation. What is the relation? Jannah. Jannah, uh, now something is hidden. What is hidden in Jannah? The scholar says that uh, the land in Jannah is all covered covered with what? Plantation, covered with grass, lush green. So we won't be able to see the land in Jannah. Everything is all covered, lush green. So that's why it's called Jannah. And SubhanAllah, the soil of Jannah is not the ordinary soil. It is perfumed soil, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, what would be the uh, smell feel like over there? Um, you know, in this dunya, when rain happen and we see that a uh, certain kind of smell, sometimes it is so soothing and so like, uh, uh, like uh, we really wanna smell this smell, right? So imagine the Jannah, right? When the soil is um, itself perfumed. So basically, the point I'm trying to make it, Jannah is called Jannah because the land is all covered. That's why we are calling it Jannah. Then we know the word Janine. Janine is like a fetus or embryo in the tummy of mother when it is not even developed. So these are the all word from uh, the word Jannah or Jinn. So Minal Jinnati, they can be from the uh, entity that is invisible or they can be from the mankind. So this whispering uh, can be from these two sources. Okay, now moving on. So all, as I said that all three ayat are connected. Min sharril waswasil khannas. So we are taking 
protection from the shar of al waswas and al khannas at the same time and allazi and who is this al waswas allazi yuwas fi sufi sudurin nas so he put waswasa where uh, in our chest and min al jinnati wan nas and uh, this whispering can come from jinn and uh, people because they can be the helper of uh, al waswas now uh the scholar subhanallah how they how much they ponder over the words right over the ayat so they say minal jinnati wan nas why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned jinn first and then nas while in another ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned an uh, an uh, al ins first and then al jinn so what is the implication minal jinnati wan nas since uh, this uh, in this aya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to mankind right so for mankind the main source of destruction is going to come from jinn okay and this jinn we know that that is the helper of uh, al waswas and then this jinn is going to inspire the people who are not remembering allah subhanahu wa taala right who does not take protection from allah subhanahu wa taala then eventually they are the helper of this jinn and they are the team of the bigger jinn which is al waswas so may allah make not uh, among them right so and it says that uh, for mankind the main waswasa is going to come from jin because uh, this uh, shaitan has given uh, kind of uh, ability by uh, allah subhanahu wa taala that he can inspire us he can distract us that is the promise he made uh, in quran e pak last uh, uh, two classes we were all talking about that right how he has promised allah subhanahu wa taala that he is going to make uh, people um uh, go astray or mislead them right so basically for uh, human beings for mankind uh this this gene is mentioned first because he is going to be the main danger so the the real waswasa or the real danger is going to come from gene but in the second aya it says wa kadhalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyyin and this is how ja'alna we made li kulli nabiyyin for every nabi aduun so every nabi has adu every nabi has uh, enemy and that is the izan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he want to test right so but this adu are shayateen they could be shayateen and they are from al insi wal jinni so now al ins is mentioned over here first so the scholar says that yes in the case of mankind uh, the primary role of uh, giving this waswasa or distracting gonna be from jinn but in the case of uh, prophets uh, by the special mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala allah subhanahu wa taala has given uh, sp- special security special protection that this shaitan this um, iblis cannot directly come to them so this shaitan this uh, iblis is always going to make al ins his helper right so that's why al ins is mentioned first subhanallah and we can see that uh, uh, in the lifetime of uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam when all these uh, um, uh, uh, politicians of uh, makkah or all these leaders when they were uh, trying to get rid of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam nauz billah so they were planning and who came to them shaitan came to them literally in the Uh, in the shape of human being in the shape of very old noble man and uh, he is the one who told them that uh, they need to kill prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam all together so um, all tribes should uh, take one person from every tribe and they should kill so 
no, uh, blame does not go on one tribe. So um, this is shaitan and taking help from insan. And we know that uh, at the time of Badr, what happened? The shaitan was uh, encouraging all these kuffar that no one can win you. Look at your, uh, uh, like how many you are and how many they are, right? So there is nothing that can stop you to kill them. But what happened? When he saw the angels coming from the sky, he literally ran away. And when people saw him running away because he was literally in a, uh, a human shape, so people asked that a minute ago you were encouraging us and now where you are uh, fleeing. He said that uh, uh, you do not see what I see. Right? And I fear Allah. He literally said, I fear Allah, subhanAllah. Right, so we can see that uh, in the case of uh, um, in the case of prophets, uh, shaitan cannot directly uh, attack them. Rather, he take help from ins. That's why ins are mentioned over here. But but in our case, the shaitan can easily distract us because we are weak. So may Allah make us such uh, strong in iman that. Uh, uh, shaitan cannot shake us. Uh, so the humans are the first because shaitan, okay, that's I already mentioned. So Iblis can transfer his vasvasa to us through jinn and human. Mm -hmm. Evil suggestion by people are the spring of shaitan. Please mute your mic. So evil suggestion by people are actually whispering of shaitan who are being vehicle of shaitan. People's mocking, negative comments, tones, facial expressions cause a huge impact on others. And that is from shaitan, right? So we should not be thinking that, okay, um, like, you know, that if you go to a, uh, maybe in a wedding, and you see someone in a abaya and not uh, uh, like nicely decked up like people do in the wedding, right? So they are just in abaya. So everyone, and especially the people who are not into deen, they're gonna look down to this person, right? And imagine if this person was a young lady. So imagine she was like uh, trying uh, uh, to fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she decided that okay even though it's a wedding and even though everyone gonna be decked out but I'm gonna go and uh, in a way that is uh, uh, prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now imagine that uh, little girl this young girl went to a wedding and the other girls are laughing at her or giving her a look that uh, she cannot bear, then what's gonna happen to that uh, girl? Is she going to put a baya ever again? No, right? So basically then this mocking, even though they didn't say any, anything, right? They just give a look and that look can be from shaitan, right? Because shaitan inspired that, okay, look at her, how she is dressing up, right? So basically we need to watch our, uh, even our, uh, uh, like our uh, look, how we are looking at someone. Uh, when we do not like someone, and if we see that person in a, in a gathering, so in our eyes, we kind of uh, give hint to other friend who knows that what's going on in between us, right? And if that person saw it, so how are you gonna feel about it? So basically the point is that Vasvasa uh, is not that we, we say something, it, it can be anything. It can be our tone, it can be any comment that we are typing on our phone, right? Or any email or uh, something on the phone we said some, to someone or even just our eyes are good enough. So that can be all the 
uh, a whispering and this is the uh, the uh, kind of uh, the goal of shaitan that he want to make people hate each other right because when we hate each other we will stop uh, we will uh, uh, keep grudging against each other and we will keep plotting against each other so what we are doing we are wasting our time in something evil and when we have all these plotting and everything do we think we are going to focus on our salah or anything no we are not going to do any zikr or anything and even if we are doing that zikr then i don't think so that is from sincere heart right so the basic Uh, goal or uh, what shaitan want us to do is to hate each other that's why we see that when people uh, uh, like very easily keep grudges for years and years for other people right they cannot come out from uh, that uh, uh, hurtful words what someone said to someone so the goal is that he want to hate is each other so we do not uh, um uh, like uh, get united as a muslim as a ummah right and all these firqas in uh, today's time we can see that is the basically the example of uh, how shaitan does not want us to get united uh, and hate each other literally muslims are muslim uh, muslims are killing each other on the name of deen subhanallah what an irony right and then uh, we can see in uh, literally in quran e pak allah subhanahu wa taala when allah subhanahu wa taala was sending hazrat adam and shaitan uh, on earth what is uh, what did he say he say ba'dukum li ba'din adu some of you will be enemy of others right so this is uh, uh, iblis want he want uh, couples to fight with each other he want divorces in the couples right he wants uh, hate between brother and sisters and subhanallah we can see today that uh, hardly there is any family that is living in harmony otherwise all brother and sister they are uh, hating each other uh, not ha- having any connection with each other subhanallah and even the relatives friends and communities right so this is what we want from us so may allah protect us and make us united okay now that was all about this little aya and now we will see uh, the conclusion and we can see that um, how surah nas is uh, connected to surah fatiha surah fatiha we already did subhanallah right so today we are going to see the connection between it and this is alhamdulillah so beautiful so this sura is deeply connected with surah falak surah falak inshallah is the next uh, sura we are going to do and surah fatiha and when allah's messenger would finish the quran he would begin reciting again uh, surah fatiha subhanallah so to show us that the journey of quran never ends so whenever prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam used to recite when he end uh, quran e pak with surah nas he always recites surah fatiha again so we should do that too uh, so that shows that uh, study of quran never ends and now uh, let's see the similarities of surah nas and surah fatiha surah fatiha start with hamd right we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillah ala kulli hal basically allah subhanahu wa taala is teaching us through this ayah and through this surah right so positive words and we know when we were doing surah fatiha in a detail we did that allah subhanahu wa taala has used noun why because allah subhanahu wa taala uh, allah subhanahu wa taala's hamd present gratitude is there it was there when we were not there and uh, it is there right now and it will be there when we will not be there right so allah subhanahu wa taala's praise does not need us it it is going to stay always so it is always there it is in the fitra but nas we uh, we start with qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas right 
and we are seeking protection. So that means there is a danger. So there is a negative tone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alerting us and telling us that there is a real danger and we need to take protection against this. So that's why auzu is used over here. And then auzu is a fail, right? So hamd was a um, uh, noun. So hamd is always there, even though we are doing it or not. But auzu is a fail. So what does that mean? We need to keep asking. And this is, uh, again, this is fail mudare, present tense. So that means just one time seeking Allah's protection is not going to be good enough. We need to keep asking over and over and over, subhanallah. So beautiful. And then kul, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to seek his protection against the evil of shaitan, right? Especially he said kul. And we see so many uh, implications of the word kul, right? So we remember all of them. Now in Surat Fatiha, number one point is that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help. In Fatiha, we say, um, right? So isti'ana. So we are seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help uh, that he guide us, uh, that we uh, walk on Siratul Mustaqeen. In Surat Nas, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. So this is isti'aza. So this is isti'ana, seeking help. And this is isti'aza, seeking protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that why we need to, uh, to take Allah's protection. Because first of all, he is Rabbin Nas, Malik in Nas, Ilah in Nas, right? He is the real authority, right? He is the only one who can save me. And secondly, this al waswas and al khannas is very strong, very dangerous. It can hurt our Iman, right? So that's why no one can save us from this fitna. No one can save us from this waswasa, um, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we see that uh, uh, the three names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are repeated in both surahs, right? Uh, Rab is mentioned. In uh, Surah Fatiha is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, right? And over here is Rabbin Nas, right? So uh, these words we can see that uh, they are repeating. Then Malikin Nas in this ayah, in this surah, sorry. And then in Surah Fatiha was Maliki Yomiddin, right? So uh, the same word uh, Malik and Malik are used over here. Then ilahinas, right? So ilahinas is used over here. And what was the uh, use uh, in Surat Fatiha? It was iya ka nabudu. So nabudu is uh, who do we worship? We worship to ila, right? So uh, these words are uh, over here. Then Allah mentioned his mercy in Surat Fatiha. Uh, we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And then what do we say? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, right? So special, very special words of mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put over there, but not here. Why? Because scholar says that Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, this Surat Fatiha is basically uh, opening of the quran e right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving his uh, intro to the mankind. So that's why he want to show them that yes, he is very Ar-Rahman, he is very Ar-Rahim, right? So that's um, special, uh, his uh, uh, two names are used over here, there. But over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use these uh, two words. Rather, he uh, just gave the intro with the Rabbi Nas, Malik Nas, and Ilahi Nas, uh, because uh, uh, the real focus is uh, that he wants us to know that uh, uh, this Rab, this Malik, and this Ilah is the only one who can save us from the real danger which, which is coming. So this is the reason uh, said by scholars. Then this Surah, 
Surat Nas begin with asking help. Surat Nas, we are asking help. We are seeking protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and Surat Al-Fatiha ends with, uh, with asking help. Right? We say, So we are asking help over there. And we are asking protection over here. Then another beautiful point is the collective and singular. So asking for help when we are saying that was collective, right? So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us how we need to take each other. We need to make dua for each other, right? And uh, when, because when we do things collectively, uh, they are more effective. The whole community, inshallah, are going to be on the Siratul Mustaqim. We, um, the good example is uh, uh, Ramadan, right? Uh, so when we see each other uh, running uh, to the world, uh, to the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Um, doing righteous deed, uh, doing sadqa khairat, uh, keeping roza, and uh, attending tarawi and the hajjud or qiyam, right? So uh, we keep doing, keep going because we see that everyone is doing it. I'm, I'm not gonna leave myself behind right so collective that um, subhanallah give us such motivation and dedication but over here um, we are saying that uh, we, we uh, are singular asking for help over here we say a'uzu, right so a'uzu is singular so that means we need to take protection individually Right? So, subhanAllah, this is beautiful, right? So, over here, we are asking collectively and uh, over here, because everyone needs to seek protection. If I'm uh, seeking protection, my protection is for me. It's not for my family. Right? My kids, they need to ask by themselves. They need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection. Just my uh, asking is not going to be good enough. So that is the message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that each one of us need to ask protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'uzu bi rabbi nas. Then anas, uh, singular, okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, that is done. Al-Fatiha, but the wording of in Al-Fatiha is plural. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, so that's what basically the point number four that uh, in Fatiha, we are asking collective help and in, um, in this surah, we are asking individual help. So first we will keep, uh, make sure that we are protected, right? We are keeping our, we are guarding our heart from shaitan and inshallah, then we are going to, uh, uh, like uh, when we are at a level, then inshallah, we are going to take uh, other people on the board and we can teach them, right? We can remind them to take protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then number five point is two negative influences. So Anas, what are the two negative influences? Uh, just last ayah, right? Minal jin nati vannas. Minal jin nati vannas, right? So this is... Uh, uh, two negative influences, we are seeking protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in Fatiha, there were two negative influences as well. Subhanallah, what were they? غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ وَلَدْوَالِينَ We do not want to be um, uh, uh, like among them. We do not want to be like them because they are the negative influence. So, Subhanallah, this is again beautiful. Then number six is uh, both surahs split into half. We already did that, right? And uh, then we have Surat Nas. This surah is, uh, yeah. So we all, we covered this one. Now, number seven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told us to seek refuge in him against shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to seek refuge in him because it was Due to the waswasa of shaitan that our parents, Adam alayhi and Hawa alayhi 
had to leave the Jannah and Paradise. And we see that uh, uh, that uh, story of uh, Adam al Islam has mentioned seven times in the Quran Pak. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning uh, that many times uh, in this story, there is lesson for us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us, telling us that look how he um, uh, made them uh, 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 like uh, like uh, what is that word? Uh, sleep, right? So he made them sleep. So if he can make them sleep, uh, what about us? We are very weak, subhanAllah. Right? So that's why these stories are over there that we need to see that this danger is real. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing that much. So the entire struggle against mankind and the devil began with the vasvasa of Iblis that he put in, uh, 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 in the heart of our Adam al Islam. The story of Adam is so important that Allah SWT has mentioned seven times in Surat Bakra, Surat Al Araf, Surat Al Hijr, Surah Isra. Surah Qahaf, Surah Taha, and Surah Saad. So these are the surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the story of Hazrat Adam al Islam. And uh, some example, Qala anjidni ila yomi yubasun, right? So we saw so many uh, ayat in the um, last few sessions that, uh, that, that are so scary his promises and how he took oath, right? So, and over here, uh, again, he's saying that uh, he said, uh, give me respite, give me some time, give me some deadline until the day of uh, judgment, until the day you are going to brought us back. So this is uh, the evidence that he has taken uh, our delay, uh, our deadline to distract people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala innaka minal munzareen. Allah said that surely you are from those who are given this deadline. And then he said, Qala fabima aghwaytani la aqu udanna lahum siratak al mustaqim. So he's saying that because of the way you got me expelled, subhanallah, look at his uh, uh, dear, Look at how he is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? That you are the one who made me do that. Who made me uh, uh, like uh, kind of, you are the one who plotted against me, basically he is saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now as a result, la udanna lahum I will sit in the in in the path and in the uh, what is this path sirat al mustaqim so he is not going to uh, sit in the path of uh, atheist right he know that uh, he is doing great in his uh, eyes right so he does not have to go much behind that person rather he is going to uh, focus on the people who are trying to be on sirat al mustaqim that is scary, right? So this is what uh, uh, in Surat Araf, he promised that he is going to sit. And uh, uh, why the story of uh, Hazrat Adam and uh, uh, Shaitan is mentioned seven times? Just uh, uh, one quick thought. We can see that uh, when Hazrat Adam al Islam realized that mistake has happened, he right away uh, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at Shaitan over here. He didn't repent, rather he's blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that shows the arrogance. Yes, we are weak. We can uh, uh, like easily uh, uh, like uh, become a prey of uh, Shaitan, right? But the point is that whenever we realize right away, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Oh Allah, yes, I made a mistake, please forgive me. 
I'm not going to do make a sincere uh, toba that you are not going to adopt this path again. This is the key, basically. Right? So, Hazrat Adam Islam is forgiven. Why? Because he right away realized and he asked Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's repentance. But look at this shaitan. He is doomed, right? Because of his arrogance. So we need to take lesson from that and never be an arrogant person. We need to right away uh, turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then in Fatiha, we are uh, seeking help to guide us on the straight path and Shaitan hate us following this path. And uh, so he will sit in our way unless we enter humbly into Allah's protection. Uh, but Iblis continue over here. And what did, what did he say? He's saying that he is going to sit in the way, in the path of uh, Sirat al-Mustaqeem. And as a result, because I'm sitting, I'm distracting, I'm making sure that I attack on the weak moment. And you will not find aksarahum, most of them, shakirin, as a grateful people, subhanallah. How true it is. Today we have so much. We cannot count our blessings. Uh, our closets are full with the clothing, our fridges are full with the food, but yet we utter the words of uh, ungratefulness, subhanAllah, right? So uh, that is uh, one of the trick of shaitan, how he can make us uh, be ungrateful. And most of them he's saying is not going to be. And that is so true in our time. May Allah make us shakirin. Amen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Then Shaitan's main tool is to prom promote shamelessness. What is the evidence? The evidence is that uh, So what happened? That, uh, uh, that uh, Shaitan, he put vaswasa lahuma. What is this huma? Subhanallah. Now we know that much uh, Arabic, that Huma is both, right? So this is uh, Hazrat Adam al -Islam and Hawa al -Islam. In, uh, uh, in Christianity, they kind of blame Hawa al -Islam, that she is the one, right? But over here in quran Pak, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that uh, mistake happened from both of them. And then what happened? lahuma, as soon as they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as, as soon as they kind of entertained the waswasa of shaitan, what happened? lahuma, ma wuriya anhuma min sawatihima. So whatever their private part were hidden from them, they kind of get uh, exposed, subhanAllah. So the very first thing is shamelessness, right? And then we see that uh, um, uh, in another ayah it says, as shaitanu. So one thing is that he is going to uh, in, uh, inculcate uh, the shamelessness in us. And subhanAllah, today we see that uh, it is named as a being modern, right? If someone is covered, then this is like uh, some someone who is a very, um, what is the word, a rigid person, right? And the modern is like who is uh, almost having nothing on their body, then this is the modernism, subhanAllah, right? So this is the trick of shaitan. Another trick is ashaitanu ya'idukumul faqara. So shaitan is that he promise you all uh, faqra, remind you not promise like uh, he uh, whenever we are trying to uh, give sadaka shaitan is going to come, uh, come and whisper what you're doing you just did uh, yesterday that that is good enough charity why you are giving more you need for your kids you need for uh, yourself 
right? So when we are shopping or when we are having food for ourselves in a restaurant, we do not care about the bill, right? We, we keep spending until our fill. But whenever we are spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving some sadqa, helping some poor person, then right away the shaitan is going to come and ask us that, oh, save something for yourself, save something for your kids, right? So this is the aidukum al faqra wa ya murukum bil fahshai. So these are the first faqr and then fahsha. Again, shamelessness is going to um, uh, command us to do. So the one of the fear of Allah's messenger was uh, Al-Fahisha, subhanAllah. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was worried that his ummah is going to commit or adopt shamelessness. How true it is. Today, especially ladies, we see that, okay, we are wearing dress, but yet we are not wearing dress. Right? They are see-through. And even we are wearing the skinny pants or the tight, subhanallah, we can see everything through it, right? So this is shamelessness. We need to teach our kids and we need to uh, make sure that we are not doing that. We need to dress up moderately. He did not fear for unjust. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not worried that his ummah is going to be unjust. Rulers are going to be in his ummah. Or they are going to be, people are going to kill each other. Rather, he was more worried about the shamelessness. Shaitan never stopped in trying to talk to the opposite danger. That is another way, right? Shamelessness can be our physical by dressing or it could be in our talk. Sometimes people just uh, uh, talk uh, dual kind of uh, um, meanings or words that have dual meanings, right? And when someone look at them and they say, no, no, I mean this over there. So we should uh, watch what we are saying, our words. And when especially we are dealing with the opposite gender, then we need to be careful, right? Free mixing. And uh, uh, these are forms of shamelessness. So we need to be aware of them and we need to avoid them. And then number nine, we already covered that, that Surat Fatiha, we can call it Istiana because we are seeking help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ibadah and uh, then in uh, Surat Nas, this is isti'aza, meaning we are seeking protection against the vaswasa of shaitan. And then I put uh, the whole summary, whatever I talk about, basically this is uh, in few words, we can see uh, this is the whole summary of uh, similarities between Surat Nas and Surat Fatiha. So you guys can read and benefit from it. And now, uh, the homework for this class is going to be uh, explain comparison between Surat Fatiha and Surat Nas. Share your learning from Surat Nas uh, and one act of deed you applied or removed from your life or what change did you bring in your life after understanding this surah. This is really important and I would really uh, want to hear from you guys because you know that uh, everyone have their own difficulties, their own different levels of Iman, right? So maybe your story is going to help other person to see and motivate that how they can overcome 
over their weakness, right? So I really want that uh, uh, in this whole week, uh, whenever you have time, sit, ponder over it. And uh, one point of action uh, I want from everyone that uh, we can share. So inshallah, uh, let's make a little dua because uh, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, that is all happened by the Izzan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us continue on this path. Alhamdulillah, matihi tatimu salihat, right? So all these, uh, if any good deed we are doing, that is happening because of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's make a little dua. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Hiyu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Zal Jalali wal Ikram. We have finished another surah of Quran with the effort of uh, effort to understand its message. So, O oh Allah, you accept it from us. Amen. Whatever is said and heard, let it resonate in our hearts, my Rabb, and let us bring it in our Amal, my Rabb. Ya Rabbi, we have realized that how Vaswasa of Shaitan can be dangerous to our Iman, individually as well as collectively. So you keep us all protected from us. We do not have any ability. We are weak. Right, so you are the only one who can protect us from this adu humubin. So keep us protected. Keep uh, us and our uh, zuriyat, our kids protected from all the waskas of shaitan, all his shar. Oh Allah, as the mother of Maryam al Islam asked for your security, your protection, your refuse for her future generations against the fitna of shaitan. We ask the same for our kids. Keep the last kid of our last generation guided. No one die, but as a Muslim, as a momin, as a sole, as a muttaki, ambassador of Islam, ya Allah, you make that. Ya Allah, you bless them with the confidence that they feel proud to be Muslim. Oh Allah, you help us to overcome the influences of shaitan by your zikr, by your ibadah. O oh Allah, you make us such that doing good deeds become easy for us and doing evil deeds become hard for us. O oh Allah, you bless us and our kids with taqwa, with tawakkul, my Rabb. Ya Rabbi, make our iman and its light so strong that we can easily pass every test of this dunya. and be able to cross the full sirat easily and swiftly. Oh Allah, oh my Rabb, make us and our kids steadfast on our deen, on your deen, my Rabb. Oh Allah, you accept all of our duas you do not even know how to ask and what to ask. You know our needs better. So bless us and our zuriyat, our generations, our young ones, with the best of the both worlds. Keep us connected with the Quran till our last breath. Oh, 
Oh Allah, you gave us according to our Oh Allah, you need you know my needs. You know my weaknesses. So you guide me accordingly. Oh Allah, you give us according to your shan, Ya Rab. Bless us all with Jannatul Firdos. Unite us with our parents, with our grandparents, and with our whole generations, with Zurriyat, our friends, our communities, my Rab. Oh Allah, I pray for all of my students who are striving hard to learn your book. And those who are struggling, help all of them, Ya Allah. And unite us in Jannatul Firdos and bless us with a special fadal. And what is this special fadal? Oh Allah, we want to see your face and rejoice. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadun la ilaha illa anta. Wa nastaghfiruka. Wa natubuhi.